I'm Stephanie Hendrickson with Additive Manufacturing Magazine. I'm here with Melanie Lang. Uh, Melanie is the co-founder and managing director of Formaloy. And Formaloy is a California-based startup that provides laser metal deposition technology. Why did you choose to focus your company on this specific technology? I wanted to focus on an additive technology that would be scalable for production and also have multiple applications that it could be used for. With laser metal deposition, it's very scalable. So you can do small parts, you can do prototypes, but you can also do very large parts and full-scale production parts. The LMD technology can be used for the additive applications, but it can also be used for repair applications and cladding or feature addition. So sometimes it's easier to bring a process in-house that you can use to repair existing parts and then maybe expand to the other applications. Another one of the advantages of this process is the ability to do gradient or multi-material parts. So I have a couple examples with me where in a single build, we've built a fully dense part. Uh, this one has three materials in it. So we've used uh, Inconel uh, 625, 718, and then Stellite 6 to finish it off. Uh, this other part is uh, Inconel with a, with a copper top on it. So gradients uh, can be used for combining multiple parts into a single build. It can be also used for unique properties that you can't achieve other any other way. For example, thermal properties. So you might want the thermal properties of copper, but need the strength of Inconel. Now you can build those materials into a single part. What are some of the challenges of building one material onto another, and, and how do you deal with that? Uh, one is that all metals do not necessarily like each other. Um, either they won't bond together, or they form a brittle intermetallic, causing them to break apart. Uh, that's another advantage of being able to do a gradient is, let's say you want to join two dissimilar metals which are very difficult to join. For example, uh, stainless steel with titanium. Uh, with our gradient capability, we can use a third metal uh, between those two in a gradient method so that way you can transition from steel to titanium uh, with using a, an intermediary material between the two. So one of the other things um, that you offer with your systems is the blue laser. How does that help you with working with different types of materials? So the blue laser is a shorter wavelength than the more traditional IR laser that's used for manufacturing. That shorter wavelength allows for better absorption for really any material that has kind of a gold look, look to it. So gold, bronze, copper. Uh, all have that advantage with the blue laser. They like to reflect the IR wavelength a lot and they absorb the blue or short wavelength laser really well. So we've made that as an option with our systems that they can have an IR laser, a blue laser, or both for ideal processing no matter what material you're using. An example of the different applications that our system can be used for can really be shown from this one part. So this is an example of a rocket nozzle component so for additive applications, we can build very complex geometries like the inlets that you see in this wall here uh, with our five axis of motion capability. We can also add features to existing parts either for repair or if a design would change. So we did add this flange uh, to this part to show that. And then finally, these stripes around here are actually clads that we added with the second material just to show the bimetallic capability as well as the ability to clad which you might want to do to add strength or for corrosion or wear resistance, for example. So you've provided machines and, and or made parts for organizations like NASA and the Marine Corps. Like these are very real industrial parts. They're going into very demanding environments. How do you ensure that you're getting a good build every time? So we do a lot of metallurgical studies and process parameter development before we build a final product for a customer for a feasibility study or R&D project. Uh, to ensure that it's a fully dense part that's going to provide the strength that's needed for the application. Another way that we ensure during the build that, that it's good quality is with a technology that we call dynamic layer selection. So as we build each layer of the part, we then scan the part and we create a topographical map of what that layer looks like. So you can use that to measure your exact layer height and then any discrepancies with that layer. The user can then choose whether it's best to stop the build and start over, depending on how far out of tolerance it is, or they might be able to correct that layer before moving on to the next layer. Where is laser metal deposition heading? What is the next step? 
I think the big advantage or next step for LMD is really to help with the transition to full-scale production. So it's pretty common to find uh, additive applications for tooling and prototyping. Now we'd really like to see the additive technology being used in full-scale production parts, uh, very large parts, uh, and even some large volume parts. And uh, we can do that with fast deposition rates and with the scalability. Melanie, thank you for joining me and talking about laser metal deposition and its potential for production applications.